Hey guys, welcome to DevOps School. But before we begin, let me inform you few things about us. DevOps School is one of the leading platform which offers DevOps, cloud and containers technology training and certification programs for freshers and established professionals who wish to update and consolidate their skills in the dynamic IT scenario. We ensure that the training solutions are delivered by highly experienced domain experts with practical working experience in various verticals. Check out the dates and enroll with us for our upcoming batches. For more info, link and contact details are mentioned in the description below. Okay guys, so now we are going to start with Terraform variables uh, for now and we'll get get going. So Terraform variable. Now what the question is, what is variable? What is variable? What is variable? So variable is a symbolic name associated with a value and which associate value may be changed also depends on the scope. Now, variables is not nothing new topic actually, only in Terraform. Uh, remember that any programming language which you have done prior to this, you have a variable. If you've done the programming in C, C++, you have variables there. Uh, you have Java variables, Python variables. In fact, if you have, might have done the programming in build tools like Maven, also variables are there. Any programming language, any scripting language is also Let's say shell, shell scripting, you might have done it. So there we have variables. In Doge scripting also, we have a variable. So anything which you might have done, any when one programming language, you might have seen the variable. Variable means simple way. Uh, simple way, if I say uh, there is one key, and for that there is a value, variable, and this value. And that variable, I can use it for that getting that value anywhere. So this way, you can avoid the duplication and hard coding of value in the program. So calling the variables, changing the variables, it may change the uh, results of scripts also. So all these things, it can be done. So these are the variables. So variables in Terraform, Terraform uh, is a, are a great way to define centrally controlled reusable values. Reusable values, yes. The information in Terraform variables is saved independently from the from the deployment plans okay so here the variables you can save you can save it's not saying i must save independently from the deployment plan which makes the value easy to read and edit from the single file okay so that is our stuff now if you look at the terraform uh, if you look at the terraform uh, you have input variables output variables and local values Okay, output values also, it's not variables, output val values. So input variables is something, I'll put it up. Uh, input variable, if I say uh, the variable which you define for the program, it may change. Output values and local values. So first discuss this, let's say output values. Uh, output values means uh, the values which you can get it from the state file. So all of you remember the state file? All of you? Yes. Do you remember the state file? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So state file, I'm sure I ask you to not to change that, but uh, uh, there were so many variables actually, so many variables were there. I hope you remember, right? Yeah. So that value, if you want to print it, that's called output value. Okay. And local values, uh, the real use cases of the local values will be done in the modules. Okay. So modules will have a look a real local values which will which will see that okay so now we'll focus on the input variable so input variable just like the variables which you have used it for that uh, like um, you set the value uh, variable set the value <coughs> sorry set the variables and set the values 
and then use that variables anywhere in your Terraform programs. Uh, it may change also if you really want to change it and get it done. So let's focus on the input variable. Now this is the slide. I feel this is one of the best slides which I'm having. <coughs> Just a second, guys. I'm getting some little bit <coughs> I mean, issues while talking actually. <coughs> I mean, somehow I am able to see only one page, um, is, which is static. Uh, are, are you sharing uh, other slides, uh, Rajesh? Oh, uh, yes, it's going on. Okay, so I think it got paused automatically. Yeah. I think also for me, also only the variable uh, slide is showing up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just, just, so far, just one page. Yeah. <clears throat> Just so. now, which screen you are see, able to see? Yeah, I mean, precedence command line. Precedence. Yeah, yeah. So earlier I showed you this this uh, this page. Have you seen this? No, 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 no. Okay. No problem. So here, these are the three types of variable you can use it, input variables, output variables, and local values. So today I was focusing on the input variable, the one which I'm talking about. Now you got the context, right? Yeah. Yeah. So now, input variable. So this slide is very important okay very important for us all. and this slide will give you lots of answer actually lots of answers and uh, guys request you all to uh, focus on the discussion and then followed by demo this will be easy for for me okay so first thing you will ask me rajesh okay variables i understand that probably there will be one name of the variable and there will be value is equal to value. But uh, where and all in Terraform we can set the variables. Please, uh, I will remind you one more time. Where and all in Terraform you can set the variable. So go from the bottom, okay. The variables you can set in the Terraform file, variables.tf. Okay. Now then you will ask me, Rajesh, the file name has to be variables.tf only. So tell me what what uh, what is your understanding when you read that variables.tf, then is this the compulsory file in Terraform? You suggest me based on the study. Yeah, it should be. No, name can be anything, but uh, it's easy to URL human being. So yeah, that's great. Like for yeah. naming. Yes, yes. So here just for depiction here. Uh, so that you can define the variables in any, any Terraform files also. Okay, you can define the variables uh, also uh, in the environment, environment variable. Yesterday you run some variables in the path, right? Something like that. Uh, yesterday also I realized that many people are not comfortable with the environment variable. So yesterday you did it, but I would request you because remember that you guys are learning uh, a tool coding a scripting whatever you want to call it programming for the for the infrastructure so we need to build that uh, infrastructure knowledge first before that so yeah uh, many of you could do that yourself but i sa saw that many of you were struggling for that so environment variables also it's uh, you can set the variable now the question is okay environment variable when i set it up how that uh, how the terraform will differentiate the normal variable which is set for the system or Terraform. So answer you have on the screen itself. Any variable, please understand that any variable which you want to use in the Terraform program, you must uh, uh, set with TF underscore var. Will you remember that? This one, right side that answer is, you have it. So you must use for tf underscore var. Will you remember that? Hello? Uh, Rajesh, can you please come again uh, for no. this? 
yeah do, uh, you can also read that dex to the environment variable which is easy to set up and you can use tf underscore var as a prefix to the variable for example your variable is a uh, name then you will set the environment variable tf underscore var in capital underscore variable name which is a name are you understanding Yeah. Okay. So I think uh, if I tell you, then probably you will not understand. I'll show you that simple. So this is my environment variable, and these are the so many variables you have. You see that all variable, path variable, temp variable, TMP variable, OS variable, path variable. So all these things you have. I want to add some variable for Terraform programs coding. So what do I what should I do? TF capital underscore var underscore my variable name is name. Understood? So here name is your variable, but in environment variable we will say you have to add this prefix. And my name is Raju. Understood? Yeah. So like that. So look at this slide, guys. So yes, you can set the variable in the environment variable also of that machine where you are running, and then you can set. Now, guys, there is one special file. Yeah, third. Yeah, Rajesh, uh, Rajesh, this particular environment variable is it uh, mandatory or is it an optional thing? No, sir. Uh, this all environment variable is optional. No, I mean depends on your requirement. It's not mandatory. See, we are talking about the. See, uh, uh, let me put it up in a simple way. Uh, see, you have a one value you want to use use in the Terraform file ten times. I'm asking in a very simple way. You want to use one value ten times. So option number one, hard code ten times, or set on top somewhere. These are the ways to set up a variable. Set one variable at some places and use that variable ten times. So that way, it will be automatically value will be in, interpolated automatically. So which approach is good? You decide. Yeah, I, mean, I got it, but only thing is about the environment variable. Is it necessary to be set, or we can use it within the program? That is what I just wanted. No, I, I'm variable is not necessarily. My question, uh, what uh, what question I'm trying to cover is the variables can be defined in Terraform. But the question which I am covering is, what are the places you can okay. declare the variable? I'm I'm not saying mandatory here. Not mandatory to define in environment variable, but it can be defined anywhere. And that's what you're trying to say. Yes, right? yes. Not it's not mandatory to define a variable in a TF program also. Okay. I'm just saying I'm I'm talking about the options. Okay, options. Yes. So Rajit, once you define a variable in environment variable, right? I mean, like how you shown, so it becomes kind of global, right? Anywhere in the, because let's say I have a different, different folder, I can use anywhere that environment variable. That's correct. Yeah. You can okay. scope is uh, for the whole system. Yeah. Okay. So, but, but Rajesh, the naming convention, what you showed, right? TF mm -hmm. underscore, that's a mandatory, right? That's a mandatory, yes. But okay. others, uh, Terraform will not differentiate what is the system variable and what variable is for my code. Okay, clear. Yeah. Okay, so guys, uh, so first place we can declare the variable in tier program, second environment. Third is, is a dot, please read this file. In many places you'll find the Terraform dot tier for vars. You know what? This file is designed for the variables actually. This is a this name of the file is this this file tfvars is designed for <laughs> designed for variables. Now we'll say Rajesh, this name is important. So yes, that is important. Then you will say Rajesh, uh, what about if I don't give the terraform.tfvars? I'll give Raju.tfvars. Then what will happen? So in that case, you have to load that manually, that file through the command line. Okay. So how to load the command line variables and all, I'll teach you later. But right now I'm thinking not to complicate too much. Uh, that file is mandatory. Terraform.tfbars is mandatory. If you give that file, 
So that means automatically Terraform will detect. Are you understanding the third one? Uh, Raj, just one question over here. So when you are saying uh, that globally we can define that variable, right? So uh, like I have seen in cases where we are defining in the variables.yaml file and then calling it in the TF verse. So I'm just having a confusion over there then. What is that? Like uh, generally while defining the global uh, variables, right? We generally define in the variables uh, in .yaml file and then call it inside the TF autoverse, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But uh, I'm getting a bit confused over here. Like when we, when you are saying like we are globally defining this variable, uh, how can we use it? Uh, like I'm just getting a bit confused on this one. So the topic right now I am covering is where and all you can define variables. Now question I did not understand of yours. Can you repeat one more time in a different word? Yeah, like uh, generally the variables, like the globally defined variables, we define in the variables dot yaml file and then call it inside the auto.tf verse for each layer. OK, so YAML, that's a, another way to do that. OK, uh, but you say globally, um, there is a, we need to understand actually. Uh, globally means, uh, what What do you mean globally? Because there is one so project, it, there is yeah. one project, just a second. Mm -hmm. There's one project, means one directory, one time you have a number of Terraform files. So globally means what? There is no globally as such uh, things are there. Uh, here, if you if you put the context globally, that means for the multiple projects. So in that case, environment variable is a good for you. Yeah, yeah, got it. Okay, okay. So remember that tier uh, bars also is for the one project only. Okay. 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 So, so now, so here just uh, regarding the precedence when you are saying, so uh, we'll when you are defining, one. we'll uh, just again because I, I'm just uh, trying to be okay. with the, all the participants, so I don't okay. want to jump the topic. Yeah, 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 fine, fine, fine. Yeah. Sure. So third, third file, which uh, we want to declare the variable is terraform.tfbars. Fourth file, you can also have a JSON file. This file is compulsory. That means if you have a variables in a JSON format, then you have to have this file. Now you may ask Rajesh, can I keep it the different name like uh, JSON? is possible, but there's a different way to load that. So I'm not getting into that right now. So for, for, for the sake of final taking a final input, if you want to put the variables values in the terraform.tfvars or terraform.tfvars.json, both are okay. One is INI format, another one is a JSON format. Remember that that particular things. Okay, but now fifth option. Do we, need, do we need both the files at the same time? No, 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 no. Oh, I, no right. Again, I'm repeating, no, multiple options are there. Okay, okay, yeah. 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 And guys, fifth option from the bottom, if you see from the top second option, which is any file, which is any file. I say any file with dot auto dot tfvars and here it can be anything which can be yaml also or it could be json also okay understand that so file name can be anything but it should be or dot auto dot tfvars and extension also you can call it json or yaml so here fifth option which is from the bottom dedicated terraform file just for assigning values okay that means this file is being used just for assigning values Okay, will be used. A list use option, fifth one. So you can right now keep the out of flow. Now, last option which you see is command line. Command line means see, you run the command terraform apply, terraform init, terraform plan, terraform delete. So there also you can run the command line options. Are you understanding all of you? All of you. So these are the places where you can declare the variable. Now, uh, the question is, can we declare the variable in interactive way? So I'll tell you the beauty of beauty of Terraform. And you know what? If you declare, think simple, OK? If let's say you have declared the variable in Terraform program, and you forgot to add the values of it. 
then what will happen you know this will prompt you that's the bottom section you see interactive so terraform while running the init apply plan destroy whatever it is it will prompt you hey you have not set the this variable can you set it on the command line that's called interactive not command line interactive means it will be prompted for it so yes that is also default behavior so terraform ask for required values not otherwise provided okay now last option which we have we can also declare the variable during calling the module so we have not discussed the module so how do we understand calling the module during that we can uh, declare the value assign the values and all so right now we are not discussing that one module last one so you can take it up in that way okay are you understanding all of you hello hello yeah okay. okay so now we have discussed guys apart from that there are two more places we have uh, which we least use so let's not discuss that one because even though you will not be able to use all these options okay so now the question is very simple please i am repeating this question one more time uh, the one one time and uh, please hear hear me carefully the question is let's say you will say rajesh i will set the values for the certain variable at a command line also auto vars also terraform json file also terraform tf vars also environment variable also and variables dot tf also means it terraform code also i'll set the variables values so tell me the final the values which will be taken from where the final values command line uh, run time command line yes so precedence is highest on the command line and followed by variables dot tf so you see the precedence arrow you see that okay so all of you understood that right hello yeah so remember that these are the places you declare the variables and the precedence as well okay this presence please remember any way okay so terraform input variables will ignore it for time being this one oh sorry no not ignore it we, we are discussing that one so now which are the terraform input variables we have types of variables okay so look at this these are the terraform input variables string we have number we have list we have python we have boolean we have set we have objects we have tuple we have now those who are coming from the python background then probably you know that uh, this is the uh, things which we have for that okay so those who are coming from the python background it's almost same actually so in go language also these are the variables which you can find so string number list map boolean so in this session what we are trying we will try with the string we'll try with the number we'll try with the list we'll try with map we'll try with the boolean so now any variables which you see primarily you have a five uh, you know arguments types arguments you will have for the each variables okay so which are the arguments you will have so you will have a default you will have a type you will have a description you will have a validation you will have a sensitive so these are the five options you will have it so variables block have five optional arguments okay we recommend setting description and type for all variables so you see the description and type is recommended okay and setting a default value when up when a practical that means it's uh, good to set up the default value default value can be overwritten depends on that where you are setting this one depends on that values can be overwritten okay now if you do not set a default 
values for a variable, you must assign a values before Terraform can apply the configuration. Okay, so Terraform does not support unassigned variables, so it's uh, important for that. Now, so these are the one arguments you'll see: default, type, description, validation, and sensitive. Now, validation and sensitive is all, again the cases where we can use it when you want to put some constraint and stuff like that. So that's a things. So here you look at this. This is how you declare the variable. Uh, look at the section default type description. Here are default type and description. So here you have variables. The name of the variable is VPC underscore CIDR underscore block. Look at the type of the variable. This is string type. Remember that I said these are the different types of variable you can declare. String, number, list, map, boolean, set, object, tuple. So this is the these are the string type variable and the values which is set in default. That's also you see that double quote column so string that is there. So this is the how to declare a variable. Look at this here, how to use the variables. Now, look at the line number one, uh, line number seven to 11. I hope all of you are able to see that, right? Seven to 11. All of you? <clears throat> yeah. So here we have declared the number variable. So type is number and the default value is three. Now, this all variables which I'm showing you right now is declaring the Terraform code. Okay, Terraform code. Now, the question is how to use the variables. So, there's one variable which is num of users, and we are declaring the variables. We are declaring using the variables uh, in the resources, and the resource number is 13 to 16. Okay. So you see that here resources I am user. So here you will be created I am user. Name of the resources is example. And look at the line number 15 carefully or 14 also. Count is equal to dollar curly braces var dot num of users. So let me put let's discuss on the line number 14 a lot. Okay. <clears throat> so understand that. Please hear me out. This pattern which you see where you are calling the variables with uh, dollar sign. So this was the last year pattern actually. This has changed, this has been changed. So, so you will say Rajesh, this code will not work. No, it will work actually. But uh, the warning you will get it, saying that, hey, why don't you declare the variable, use the variable uh, with the var dot num of users only. No need to put the dollar and curly braces. So that one thing is clear. That means what you need to do in order to use the values of the variable, you have to use the var dot num of users. Got it, all of you? Understood, all of you? Yes. Uh, could you please repeat, Rajesh, the last line? Uh, this, I said, if you declare the variable line number seven to eleven. What type of variables to declare? Number. Number. Yeah. Now, how to use that variable in the program? So you have to use the var dot num of users in the current trend. But the old trend is on last year trend. Or last year pattern was dollar also. So both will work. But to avoid the warning, you should go for directly var dot num of users. Understood? Okay. Yeah. So now the question is, what is a count here? So see. Remember that yesterday I said you have a resource block and inside the resource you have arguments, right? Correct? No? Yes. Okay. So that arguments is provided by the platform itself. That means provider itself. But you know what? There are some attributes. I'm not saying attributes, which we call it a global attributes. We supply for every resources irrespective of uh, provided. I repeat, 
there are some attributes which has been attached to the each resources each resources irrespective of provider that means it's a global attributes so then we will say rajesh what is a global attributes so global attributes something like a count here you see count is not provided by provider i repeat count is not provided by provider then provided by whom so provided by terraform that means count i can use to any to any resources irrespective of provider so this line you are clear right now next line you will say rajesh what is the use of count so we can we are using count to run that particular resources that many number of times so for example here let's say yesterday you created a resource group let's say you want to create a three resource group then what to do so you could could do the instead of writing a three times resource block simply you say count is equal to three that's all so that will create a three resources yesterday you created a three repository also github oh sorry sorry one repository so if you want to create a three repository then what you have to do just you say count is equal to 3 <clears throat> and it will run three times yesterday also you created a vms on aws also how many vms you create one but if you want to create a three vms you could have done the count is equal to 3 so did you understand the count line at least or uh, yeah but one uh, one uh, uh, question i'm getting mm -hmm. like if we just make the count 3 or any number more than one uh will that not be a name conflict on well, azure or best observation best observation so answer you have in the 15 line look at this line number 15 your answer is hidden in the line number 15 okay see that yeah yeah okay so here yeah, basically rajesh this count and name are standard word standard uh, name uh, or uh, standards provided by terraform that is what terraform. i'm saying right? yes that's what i'm saying you can use irrespective of any provider any resources you can use it. now he has a right concern like don't you think like if i create a two resource uh, two uh, resource group then it will create a problem yes of course it will create problem but line number 15 i had a solution here what i did i created the name rajesh after that appending will happen dot and anything count dot index index means first time it will run it's a zero index second time it will run one third time it will run two so my user will be created rajesh dot one rajesh dot two rajesh dot uh, sorry rajesh dot zero rajesh dot one rajesh dot two understood all of you so automatically uh, when you put three or four or whatever number that uh, so many indexes are run i mean it is looped out uh, automatically or we have to provide a loop no 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 i am saying no uh, say you count is equal to 3 it would run three times so there is a fail or pass that's not a problem okay i am not talking about the failing and pass no no i didn't talk about fail or pass sir. what i am saying is uh, that based on number it will take automatically so many times yes automatically or we have to specify some uh, additional uh, code for that no no simple if you want to run three times on resources count is equal to that three times if you want to run five times count is equal to five times simple got it okay okay yeah thank you so now all of you understood that right how to use the variables here how to declare the variables string variable how to declare the value number variables and how to use it uh, the context can be see uh, the how to use the variables where to use the variables is in the programmer's mind okay we can only teach how to declare variable where to declare variable how to how to use it okay so understanding guys right all of you third thing you see that use cases of string variable look at it very simple code actually every code you have in the same page the line number 7 to 11 first look at this this is a string type name of this string variables values of the string repo name is a day3 hyphen broad okay and here you are creating a github repository okay 
and here you see name var dot repo name is being used and you can use the dollar sign which you have discussed multiple times left side you see that it's a new trend var dot template so left side also you have a one variable string variable right side also you have a string variable uh, right side you have a old method left side you have a new method also both will work no problem all of you understood yes rajesh yes rajesh yeah so this is the stuff now let's look at this another one list list how can we see so i would request you to look at the line number 21 carefully right side left side it's very pretty much short forward so what is the variable name users what is the type list the default value is should be in the list format list format which is always with the square bracket so this practices is coming from the all the programming languages so any programming language you have, which you might have done it you understand that list how to present the list so here right side if you see devops school 11 devops school 2 devops school 3 so three elements we have in this list so list means uh, tell me that uh, what is the index 1 uh, anyone would like tell me look at the line number 21 <clears throat> which is the index 1 what is the value devops school 2 yes wonderful yeah so zero index is 11 1 is a 2 devops school 2 and 2 is devops school 3 index remember element always we have a list elements concept now look at this here line number 26 how do we use the list value so here the var dot users and a square bracket index number that's index number so you have to use zero index number or one or two okay so whatever the values will be there automatically it will be done okay okay so left side also right side also same code so this is the way you can use the list Yes. Yeah. Question here. Line number twenty-six. Part dot user zero. So how can we do? What is that? And the line number twenty-six. Ha! Huh, it's been taken from the left, left, left. Part dot users from the left. You have a top variables declared. No? Variables users. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. so rajesh when you don't use the dollar sign right you don't need to put the var dot users uh, uh, under a uh, uh, double quote right ha huh. so i repeat dollar sign and uh, this curly braces is not required nowadays from last one year plus okay so old right code if you want to see that look at the right left side username is equal to var dot users and index number 0 so that is the way we uh, write nowadays right Folded ways which we use the dollar sign, but double quotes is required, right? Yeah, double quotes is uh, which double quote you are talking about? So I don't think it's required because left side it doesn't say it's under uh, double quote. No, no, which which double quote? Okay, there you are talking about the line number twenty six. That that double quote. Okay, that double quote is not required when you are using var dot 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 dot. Right, right. Okay, so little bit changes has happened. old code you have in the right side new code you have in the left side both will work so are you comfortable with the list now yep okay now map so this is a one more type of code which is called map look at this map if you want to correlate with the programming language is something with a case statement okay so it's a map so here you have a variable plans okay variable plans type is equal to map 
now here default value it will be in a key and key and value format so default value will be key and value format so here we have a 5 usd which is a key 10 usd which is a key 20 usd which is a key and after that you have you know the value that's a cpu 1 gb 2 gb and 4 gb so how to use the map in this case so if you want to use a map then var dot plan is a variable and then you have to use the key here not index key so you see the key automatically you will get the value of 1 gb or 2 gb whatever it is understood all of you okay so this is a map look at this one more example of map very carefully left side look at this line number 5 to 10 okay so here you have a two key us east 1 and us east west 2 so mids for this is us east 1 different west 2 is different so how to use that mids look at the line number 17 so here you are saying var dot mis you have two variables are there if you look at it very carefully so here var dot mis and then var dot region so var dot region which you see is not a uh, not declared here var dot region is not declared so from where it will come any idea so var dot region will come from the provider's file which you declare remember that region you declare in the provider's file i hope you remember no then i'll show you here so no we that so here if you go rajesh hall workspace terraform major this is the provider file of mine so here we set the region for the azure and aws both so this is the region okay and for azure we set in the that locations correct uh, here this is the location so that's a variable which has been taken from there for azure right azure it, it's a setup only for the particular resource group right yeah resource group no i mean I, here it's here i'm talking about this uh this region aws oh. yeah aws mm -hmm. okay this one. so it's a variable so here you have used that variable so here the values of this variable will come let's say ap south one so uh, let's say it will come us east one so in that case the value will be incorporated interpolated ami underscore dot 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 So uh, one question, Rajesh here. Uh, so if it is Azure, should we use var dot location and then is it like that or is it var dot no location? Location is not variable here. So uh, location is not variable here. This is the one not variable. So what to do here? So you can set this as a somewhere in this any Terraform file and then you can use it here. This is not a variable. Okay. You mean in providers, we have to specify region equal to whatever the region is and yeah. then start using. Yeah, yeah. Right side, look at this here, simple one. Uh, 54 to 50, 60 line number. Here you have a map, key, account, value, DevOps one. Look at the line number 62 to 65. Very carefully. Here we are using the loop actually okay loop so for each means it will run that many times as the name uh, the as the number of elements you have in the map okay so here it will run how many times so it will run three times 
because 57, 58, 59, three elements we have. So here you say for each is equal to var dot account name. That means it will run that many times and it will run that times. And here you see each dot value. So what is that each dot value? So here understand that uh, we'll explain you a little bit, little bit later also for each. But for time being, whenever you set for each, so here the var dot account name is set for that. Now the for underscore each is set that var dot account is three and number list of elements. That's a fixed one. Now when you call each dot value, each dot key, so it will it will set that account one first time, second loop two times, set account two. And each dot uh, key will be set three. Each dot value will be set first time DevOps one, then second time DevOps two and DevOps three. So it's a looping actually. So here first time it will create the username DevOps one hyphen IEM, DevOps two hyphen IEM, and then third time DevOps three hyphen IEM. So looping we'll discuss in detail, but just to make you comfortable how do we write our programs and all. So we are looking at. It. So are you comfortable with it, Matt? Yeah. Uh, what is, I mean, left side, what is uh, instance type t2.micro? That uh, type, no? Um, type of CPU VM, and RAM. VM size. VM, VM type. I mean, CPU RAM. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So, this is the map. Now, guys, this is a bool. Bool means true and false. Bool means true and false. So, what we have here? Look at this variable. Left side, I think, will be easy for you to quickly. You can check that. But right side logic is realistic. Okay. So first, look at the left side. Here, your variable set and un set underscore password. What is the value? Default is equal to false. False value set. So now here you are saying, hey, create underscore password is equal to what? So here it will be set false. Right now. Hello. Uh, sorry, uh, we didn't get. Um, I didn't get your. Just look at. I mean, I didn't get your question. No, I'm. I'm just discussing. I'm not asking any question. Actually, there is a variable set underscore password. Default is equal to false. That value is set false. It's a boolean, true and false. Okay. So now, okay. now the value values of create underscore password will become a false. Agree with me, all of you. Yes, yes. Yeah. So now when you want to change here, look at this clever uh, things you can do here. You can change Terraform underscore uh, Terraform apply and the variable you are setting set underscore password. So try to understand that. I want to ask you a question now. See in the Terraform file, the create underscore password is set false. Correct now all of you. Hmm. And uh, set underscore password is also set uh, false. Now, in the command line, the values of set underscore password is true. So I am curious which will be used actually in the real case. It will be taken from the command line. True. 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 Wonderful. True. Yeah. So you guys got it. Now look at this little bit complicated, but I think. It's a more realistic actually. Okay, this is a real code actually. I'm typing on the screen, line number one to 18. So here I have created one bool value, one line number one to four. So here only declare the bool value. We have not set the true and false. Default value is not set. Okay, so now here variable, there's one more variable which is set uh, create underscore VMs. So here you have two variables, create underscore VM and then another one, create underscore VM. So both the variables has to be set. Now look at the line number 13 to 18, very carefully. This is creating Azure Linux machine actually, Azure box. This is the resources for creating Azure box. So here, think simple, okay? Line number 15, 16, 17, 18, those, all those are normal entries for the VMs. That's the regular entries. Where you will create, what resource group, what size and blah, blah, blah. But line number 14 is important. So here, 
I explained you count already. I hope you remember that. What is the count means? So here, line number forty yeah. says, count is equal to var dot create underscore vm and uh, create underscore vm, and then uh, this is a exclamation. I mean, exclamation question mark. What whatever you want. Question mark. Yeah. Question mark. And one, this is called ternary operator. Actually, in real, uh, we call it ternary operator. So uh, one and colon zero. What does that mean? Anyone have a clue? What exactly it will? Yes, yes. Uh, if it is uh, two, then one and zero. Correct. So here, create underscore vm, which is the variable number line number one. Okay. So if the variable is set true, then it will set one. And if variable is not set at all, then automatically it will set zero. So what will happen? So if the variable is true. Then it will create a set count is equal to one, and if the variable is not set, then count is equal to zero. So what will happen? So variable if count is equal to one, it will create a vm one time. If the count is equal to zero, then it will create a vm. Azure vm? No, no vm because just set the count zero means no. So it will it will it will not create a vm at all because it's saying run count is equal to zero. Getting more points? No, actually, I didn't get. Mm. So here, uh, you understand that var dot create vm, right? Yeah. So if you set the variable, how do you set that variable? So you can set the variable here. Hard coding value is not there. So you can set the variable using the command line or interactive way. Command line means you understand that command line. Look at this command yeah. line hyphen var left side. That's the way yeah, you can yeah. set the command. And in, and uh, interactive also. This means when you don't set, it will tell you what you want to set true and false. Okay. So now if it is a true, then the value will be set one for what? Create underscore v. And if it is a false, then value will be set zero. Are you understanding? Okay, yeah. So count means is like uh, yeah means like when we are just you know uh, I, at at the time of execution this is script when we set the value at command line true or false that is where it gonna make difference right? Yeah. Okay, got your point. Okay, but if you go to right side right, we are not defining any default value. Right, I'm I'm telling you know if mm -hmm. default value is also in a terra form interactive also. Correct. When you run this program, it will prompt you. You have not defined the value, or you can also set through the command line also. Right, right, right. Correct. So what I'm saying is, uh, right side. If I run the right side programming, it will ask in the uh, interactive session, okay, with what value you want. Right. Right. Yeah. So this is the boot. Now, guys, one more thing I would like to cover: output variable because that is important right now. And this easy is also, so I'm I'm trying to cover that. What is the output variable? So I hope you remember that output variables means simple. Output variable is not a variable actually; it's a values output values. See, very simple way I'm putting up. See, you run the Terraform code, and then all the output is being stored in a state file. And all of you are agreeing with me. You know that very well now. Now the question is: See, there is a two ways. Yesterday I taught you to see the output variables. How? When you open up a JSON file, okay. So you get mad actually because there's hundreds and hundreds of variables are there. Which one to look for it? I don't want to waste my time. Then I said, okay, you can do second tricks. I forgot what tricks I taught. I taught you. I, you anyone remember how to see the output? Telephone dots apply grid. using show. Wonderful. Show. Yes, you guys are having very sharp mind actually. So yes, show show is the one. I forget a lot to be honest. So I have to repeat five times, six times myself to remember that. That's my problem. Yeah. So show. So show. You can run this command show. It will give you the output of uh, JSON file, state file, and through that you can grep also the tactics I taught you. But you know, guys, that is not that's not good. It's a time-consuming things. So what you do? 
use the output uh, output arguments in your program and that way when the program is will run it will generate a state file and from there at the end of it remember at the end of it it will give you the output whatever you wanted to display on the console only console means the command line only so the question is how do we use it so look at this very carefully this program very simple code okay now <clears throat> see here there is one block which is called output block multiple examples i have given it to you okay so here uh, i would suggest you look at the first program only no, which is not in the black uh, uh, box so output is the name of the output instance underscore ip underscore address what is the value means now this value will be aws underscore instance dot server dot ip now if you forgot on aws instance i will i would like to open that code actually for you just again here it is so if you look at this here here aws uh, you can you see my cursor on my screen yes yeah so aws underscore instance the values from which one which resources which resources aws instance now what is the name of the resources server what is the name of the resources here web correct now and and what value private underscore ip where is that private underscore ip so now it will be there in the in the Oh, I deleted actually. So ah, its backup is there. No lucky. Yeah, automatic backup is created actually. So private underscore IP is. Uh, this is a uh, AWS. Yes. So private IP address is. See. So what will be the value printed on the output or on the command line? So now are you understanding this output values? How can you use it? Output section. So just use any output you want to display. I'll, I'm putting in a very simple way. See, if you don't want to see that JSON file, no, don't don't see that. If you don't want to run the show file, don't run. But what you do if you want to have a specific output on the, your screen from the state file, then use the output as a resources. Output is a resources which is irrespective of irrespective of provider. It will work for. Any any time because it's, their work is to read the state file. So in the, in that in that case, you just provide the resource name, resource uh, resource uh, resource name, and then what is, whatever the variables you want to keep it and then use it. So now if you see that, uh, look at my here lb underscore url which is output, and here the values you are getting. Look at this here. This uh, this is a nice way to show the output. So actually, I want to see the only the module dot elb dot http dot this name DNS, but you are putting in the pattern actually. So that way you will not struggle for it. Your user who is using the uh, Terraform code will not struggle for it. Okay. Now here, if you see, there's a function has been used. Right now, I don't want to discuss about the functions. You'll get lost. But now there is one. So if you set this, it will it will show you. Remember that it will show you oh, the output on your screen, but also you can run the command Terraform output, and it will tell you all these things. So if I set lb underscore URL VPC ID and web server, all these things you can see in one case. So you don't need to struggle. It's just a time saving uh, things. Are you able to understand all of you output values? Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, so this is the way you can set the. Uh, Rajesh, I mean, if I run the Terraform output, it will just show the for for the current session uh, the all the output values. I mean, variable values or. Uh, yeah, it yeah, show... only for the current session. That output, whatever when you run the command Terraform output, it will read your Terraform code. See that output sections of the code, whichever you are trying to outputting. And then it, that will read your uh, state file and give you the output. Okay. Are you understanding all of you? 
but where i get less needed uh, i mean in a case everywhere see think simple okay right now yesterday you run only three resources and you got hundreds of line in state five but in real you know you will run thousands of resources hundreds of resources will which will result in thousands of lines uh, of the code in the state file are you going to read thousands of line or what you will do clever work put the output values of uh, sections in your terraform code and then uh, you run that you will see the output values automatically and if you want to see that after run also you can, let's say you forgot just run the terraform output and it will show you only the value which you wanted uh, through the program code and you have that output for example ip address public ip address you want ec2 or maybe load balancer address you want or maybe something like uh, uh, something like uh, s3 i mean the some url of dns you want all this thing you want getting one which you created through the code uh, so that is one question here so it gets uh, override or it's get appended uh override if appended is no uh, yeah if i run uh, you know the same output file consecutively for three or four times so data will keep on appending in the same file or it will get override uh, why it will get override remember that i am again repeating output will give you the variables values read from the state file so i am not talking about the appending here it is uh, output is a way to reading the red uh, state file are you getting confused anyways uh, it maintains the latest uh, state right it won't have the history kind of thing mm. okay i'll i'll put it one more way understand this let's say you have a very complicated uh, terraform code you run it okay now understand the pain area you run it now you want to know the ip address which uh, whichever is got created public ip address of your vms virtual machines of azure then what to do now you have to go to a state file and search for it or or show command which you answered me correct but that pain area i want to avoid it so what i will do in the code itself i will run output section that output section you can see multiple examples is been given so i'll run add add the output section so what will happen the moment i run the code okay i will see on the console only the output variables that's the first time let's say after that you forgot that output variable so after some time you came back and say that, hey i forgot that output variable which i created last time one hour ago and i don't want to run this terraform code once again so how do i see that output again so again you run the command output terraform output and it will read that uh, those variables from the state file again and because state file is there no all the time right state file is there all the time it will read that state file again and then it will print you that simple but uh, rajesh i mean uh, let's say for for each uh, output value we need to create a separate uh, output variable or uh, let me reframe my question uh, can we use it as log block block means log log for logging there are log files right we uh, we have it like 3 days one week so can no, we no, use no. it i think we are mixing two things see here okay. again i am repeating uh, running the terraform and generating a log is a different thing <laughs> response from the provider storing <laughs> in a state file is a different thing i am saying here you are saying logging i am saying output this is a different thing Yeah, so that's what I wanted to confirm. Thanks for. It's an output. It's a state file. Is always remember hard code statement. State yeah. file is output, and always I'm saying, how can I see the output of the state file in easy way? That's all problem you are solving. I'm not solving any great problem. I don't want you to go to the state file and search for some variables. What you, I want you to do that. Add this output section in your code itself, and you see that in easy way which way you want to see. That's all. Thanks. Thanks for answering. All of you understood, right? Yeah. So this is the output. Rajiv, what I was asking is for each uh, each we value to retrieve, right? We need to create a separate variable, right? Output variable. Yes, 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 yes. Hundred percent correct. Yeah. So if you want to have a ten values, you have to have a ten output sections. Correct. 
Okay. 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 So you, you mean, let's say if I create, I already created one uh, state file, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't want to go through the big lengthy uh, state file. So what I can do, I can quickly create one uh, uh, variable, output variable, and then mm -hmm. fetch the value of that particular uh, variable. That's all. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You can keep it a part of that, uh, uh, all the Terraform program only. It will be easy for you. Okay. That's the reason we say it's not output variable, it's output values you want to print it through, which is set in the state file. Those variables is set in the state file. See the state uh, state file one more time. Probably you will understand a little bit. See, this is all is this. Tell me one thing. Which type of value is, uh, which type of variable this is? Tell me. Boolean. Boolean. Wonderful. You got it. Now you tell me uh, this one. What is this? Num string, string. string. Oh, sorry, string. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this, is, yeah. this is number. Yeah, num. This correct. is also number. Number. Okay, let me show you the list. See, this is a, this is a not list. Uh, this is a, what is it? Map. Okay, key value, key value, key value, key value. Let me show you the list if I get it. Uh, actually, this is the list, but it's very difficult to understand now so i want to show you the smaller one so you'll understand easily this is also list but there is no element for it this is a map key value key value key value uh, so do we have a list oh, no it's not there okay it should be there but uh, yeah i'm not reading it. so it's like that so you want to see this all these variables so how do you put it up simple output values Along with that, you can access our other tutorials such as Docker, Ansible, Jenkins, Terraform, Splunk, AWS, Azure and various other DevOps related premium tutorials with our channel membership. If you would have any issues with our channel membership, you can drop an email to us at contact at devopschool.com or you can also unsubscribe from channel membership anytime if you don't want to continue or did not like the video. To get our channel membership, click on to the join button, select the 3D99 plan and grow your skills immensely. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries. We will reply to them at the earliest. Thanks for watching. Hello everyone. If you would like to access the remaining videos of this playlist or 50 plus more tools which are coming under DevOps, DevSecOps, SRE, DataOps, GitOps, ETC. Kindly become our channel members by clicking on the joining button. You would have access to 100s of playlists and 1000s of videos lifetime access with this membership. Enjoy!